Hi everyone, it's Christy. Welcome back. I have one more thing I want to make for you. Um, this is a gift I'm making for my mom. Of, um, I think it was last, either last Christmas, I might have been the Christmas before I made my mom a journal using this kit. And um, I thought this time I would make something with the grandkids that actually had the grandkids in it. Um, so I won't be putting the pictures um, on here yet. I'm just going to make the little uh, display and show you how to do it. Um, but I don't have permission to show all the grandkids except for mine. So, <clears throat> excuse me, not my grandkids, but my children. So, uh, anyway, I thought I would um, show you how to put this together. Now, I got this idea from Heidi Swap. And she said she used a Splenda box, and I had a macaroni and cheese box, and then I got the Splenda box. So basically, this is the size I'm going to do. And what we're going to do is make a flip, basically a flip chart, easel kind of thing. Um, what I've done is, this is the Splenda box. I've taken the top and the two sides off and just left the front and the back attached at the bottom. And it does go in here, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to wrap this um, in paper and then I'm going to line the inside and I think, I think we'll be fine uh, where that's concerned. Now, the collection, the paper collection that I'm using is uh, another Artie Mays. You know how I love Andrea's stuff. This was the first kit that I ever purchased and it, I believe it's called vintage journal kit vintage style journal kit something like that uh, it's an oldie but a goodie and I just I do adore this but it matches the journal that she has sitting on her bookcase my mom's bookcase and so I thought you know this display would be perfect to go next to that so I've printed out the tag page I've printed out the banner page and I've printed out this envelope page basically because I want to use that. None of this will go to waste because uh, anything I don't use will go in another uh, journal. Then I have printed out this page. I'll probably just use this one and then I'll use these two and these two. Um, I don't know if I'll use the calendar but I will definitely use that one. The butterflies and the roses. And those are going to be basically my pages that are going to go in this flip book. Um, and then I'm going to be adding the tags and ephemera to the front kind of as a cluster. I'll probably add some lace and some seam binding and maybe some crochet trim as well. Um, you know, just to um, add a little bit of interest as it's sitting there on her bookshelf. And then the uh, photos... Um, that I will have to go pick up because I don't have a, well, I have a photo printer, but I don't like printing them here. Um, they turn out better when I take them to Walgreens. So then I will add the photos um, to that later. But um, this, these are the pages and things that I'm going to be using for this. Now I did also print out, all of this is on cardstock. I printed out these two background pages, which is, I think there's a page in here, uh, no, it's not that one, but there's another page in here that's similar to this, but this one has writing on it, more of a uh, subtle background page. So this is what I'm going to be using to wrap the box. And then what we're going to do is use the cinch to bind the top, and uh, it'll have the ring across here with all the pages and everything attached, and you'll be able to flip, uh, flip over. Okay, so let me cut this apart. These are two to a page, but I, I enlarged these just a little bit on the printer so that I could do the front um, do the front and the back of the box here. Okay, so um, we'll just go ahead and say that's the front and I'm going to attach that so that I can wrap around on those three sides. About a half an inch all the way around. 
I'm not really concerned about the bottom. What I'll probably do is take another piece of cardstock and wrap it with any of the papers that's left and I'll glue that to the bottom just to give it a little bit more weight. Um, but I'm not really concerned about that right now. It should stand up no problem. So I'm going to, well I guess I can just add glue to this, it won't matter. I'm going to add some glue here all the way. I suppose I should have checked to see if this was the right way up or not. And it is. So I am just going to lay this down, centered the best I can. I'm not going for perfection here because the focal point is not on this base piece. The focal point will be all the photos. And I probably should have just put glue in the middle because I've got to cut those corners. Oh well. All right, now you see I want this to be up because the outside is the top. So I'm going to turn this around and do it um, the same way. Make sure that's the right side. And I think this time I'll just put the glue on here. <laughs> be a little bit easier to know where the glue is going to go. See, this is why I tell you things. I always have have known. Come on, get that bubble down there, up there. Get the glue down there. <laughs> that you always put the glue on the smaller piece, then you don't have to worry about all that excess. I mean, that's not always possible, but in this case it wasn't. I didn't even follow my own rules. So, I put this here. There again, centering it the best I can. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim these, um, just these corners here, leaving about, well, this board is cereal weight, so, or cereal weight, <laughs> lightweight, like a cereal box, how about that? So I'm just, um, I don't need to leave a ton of extra there, maybe sixteenth of an inch. And I probably didn't cut this one where I should have. I should have cut this um, on the inside of that score line, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. We'll make it work. But just so you know, you want to cut inside the score lines of the box. And I think I just cut on the wrong side of it. So let's get some glue here if it'll come down. I'm going to do the, in, the ends first and then we'll do the sides. Use my bone folder here just to make sure that's lined up. I will be inking around this, so I don't think any white will be showing, but just in case. All right, let's turn around and do this side. I'm just kind of rubbing up against the edge of that board there to give me a nice, nice crease. Okay. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and I want to press this down. This is that little overage part there. I want to make sure those are down and flat. Same thing here. And then I'm just going to gently um, 
come along the edge of this cardstock here, stopping here because it, it goes in and I don't really want that. But that'll just help me fold it over. Okay. Now I will probably go ahead and fast forward this part. Except to say that I'm going to start at this end and I'm not going to follow the contour of this bottom piece. I'm going to fold that flat out like that. Okay, now I do need to get some glue under here because I don't want that lifting and also under here. Okay, and then we are going to find that area and fold that down and here as well because if we wait until we have that uh, inner lining on it's going to be too thick so that'll be fine and you can see this is going to be like this this is the bottom okay so I have the writing this way up and this way up and we want to repeat that with the inside and I'm just going to use these pieces again so let's measure um, so I know I can cut those down I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter by I think I'm going to let this overlap so let's do four and a quarter by eight and three quarters I better write that down or I'll forget four and a quarter by eight and three quarters. Um, and it won't be able to do eight and three quarters because this is eight and a half <laughs> inches tall. So I'm just going to um, trim the white off the top and the bottom and slice these down to four and then we'll use that size. Okay, so I am just going to attach this to the inside. And this part really won't be seen because it's going to be on the inside, but I just want it to be, you know, look like it's, it's finished. So that's why I'm doing the inside. And I think I'm just going to take a piece of this and wrap it around there. I don't think we need the extra cardstock. So I think I'm just going to trim this off and wrap that around the bottom. I need to put my printer back on borderless. Now 
Now I'm not going to do any of the inking on the inside. I'm only going to do that on the outside. So let's, um, that's the inside. This is the outside. So let's just go ahead and attach that. About a, it's about an inch and a half. And like I said, this piece is going to be on the bottom, so it's not going to really matter. Okay, I am going to bend these again so that I can remember where the center is. I think we're pretty good, but yeah, pretty close, pretty close. At least it's going straight. Okay. And then we'll just glue these around. Okay, so this is going to stand like that, so you will be able to see that. So I'm going just to take another piece and put right on, on top. Doesn't have to be um, perfect, but I want it to be continuous. So I'll probably won't use that side, but I'll probably do it from there. And let's do it to the edge of the paper there. All right. This is 28 pound paper that I'm wrapping around. Everything else I printed on cardstock. So. Um, okay. Like that. Okay. So there is our outside piece, and it will stand like this. So, like I said, none of that is going to show. I am going to ink around... And I used, look at that, I used all but this much of that paper. So, all right. Um, I'm going to ink and I'm going to use my vintage photo. So. Alright, so there we have the uh, easel portion of our easel flip chart and um, next time we'll start putting the pages together. I'm going to do some cutting and then we'll um, come back together and I'll show you what we do. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.